Hello everyone, this is Brian, and today I'll show you how to make an invisibility tool. So first, we're going to insert a tool into the starter pack. It will not require a handle, so just get rid of that. Let's call it invisibility tool. And then a local script, we're going to insert a local script inside because we're going to be using the player service. And then I'm getting the local player, and that only works inside of a local script tool equals script dot parent. Now the first thing we're going to do is make a function that will toggle um, the tool um, to be active or not active, and we're going to set that to false by default. And then when the toggle function goes to execute, we can say if toggle equals false, then toggle equals true. Then else, or if toggle equals true, we're going to set it to false. There we go. So. Now we're going to uh, uh, call an event for when the tool is activated and connect our um, toggle function into here. We're going to put another function inside of here, which is why I did function and I just typed in toggle into these parentheses. So to test that, we're going to print um, toggle and let's see how that works. So if I, okay, so it sets to true and false. So that all works. So let's go into here and have our script actually do something. So we're going to say, um, set visibility. <laughs> I can't, well, I can't programmers name variables functions. Anyway, so we're going to make a function called set visibility, and I'm going to go ahead and call it. So we're not going to make any function parameters for this since um, toggle is a global kind of variable. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get um, the player's character, not the player inside of here, but the character in the game, and make uh, get all the parts and set it, those parts to a certain transparency. So I'm going to do that in um, an encapsulating function, and I'll explain why I'm doing that later. So local function equals uh, set part visible. I guess, and then there's going to be a um, transparency value, but I'll explain that when we get there. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a table of everything that's inside of the player's character. So player dot character get children. So we're getting everything that's um, parented to the player's character. By the way, if you don't know what a table is, you should be learning how what a table is. Anyway, speaking of stuff that you should probably already know, um, this is going to require a for loop. And if you're not familiar with for loops, if you haven't programmed anything using them yourself, you probably should uh, look that up. But anyway, for the rest of you, um, we're going to say for i comma part in i pairs, and then our table. So in i pairs human do, and then we're going to say if part is a, which is a function that checks um, what its um, Roblox class is. So is a part, then part dot transparency equals trans. So we set this trans thing here so that we can reuse the same function for whether we're setting everything to be invisible or setting everything to be visible. Speaking of that, let's actually uh, do something with this function by saying um, if toggle equals true, then set part visible one. So one is fully transparent. So yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, else set part visible zero so that'll make it completely opaque so if toggle is true that means it's on set you invisible otherwise make you visible so let's go into here and see if that works okay so it sets all the parts and oh damn it what this great thing here is is a humanoid root part if we go into to into be here it is so um, this is transparent by default, and since we were setting all parts to be opaque again, it also set this one to be opaque even though it was transparent to begin with. So um, we're just going to make an exception in the for loop. We're going to say is a part and part that name does not equal humanoid root part. Then we're going to go in here and okay, so that works. But 
you'll notice that we're only setting the parts to be invisible, which, I mean, that's what we said in the script, but we're only setting the parts to be invisible and we don't have this stuff. And that's kind of maybe where a lot of people get stuck because I've seen invisibility tools where it just deletes the face, the hats and everything. And when you're visible again, you're just faceless and look weird. So that's what I'm going to be teaching you is how we can get rid of this when we're invisible, but bring it back when we're visible again. For that, we're going to make another variable up here called create folder. So it will create a folder as soon as... Um, uh, the script loads, which I believe is just when the player comes into the game. So function create folder. Um, we're going to say folder equals nil. If player find first child of class folder equals nil, then folder equals um, instance.new folder inside the player. So what we're doing, oh wait, let me call this, that's probably important. Okay, so, oh, and one more thing. <laughs> we're going to name the folder Accessories. Okay, so, we're creating a folder, and to make sure that it doesn't create more than one folder, it says, if player find first child of class folder equals nil, so if the player doesn't already have a folder in it, then create one. Otherwise, it won't create one, and you'll always be assured to have one folder. If you have multiple folders, they'd probably mess up that and stuff. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to... We're going to make a new function that actually uses that folder. So we're going to call um, local function move accessories. And then we're going to say str, which is my shortening of string. So... This is going to get a little confusing, so just bear with me. Move accessories string. So string is where we want to move the accessories to. So if we're moving the accessories from the player into the folder, so if string equals folder, then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be getting our, our list of children here, and we're going to be getting those from the player and moving them into the folder. But if str equals player, we're going to be getting them from the folder and putting them into the player. So basically, depending on where we're moving them, dictates where the accessories are in the first place for our um, for loop to enumerate through. So if the string equals the player, then that means it's in the folder. So folder, yeah, just to get children. Um, oh, wait, I have to make that a variable. Accessories equals nil. Accessories equals folder. And then else if string equals folder, then accessories equals, well, the player, so player dot character get children. Okay, now we're going to make our, our for loop similar to the one above. So for accessories do if item is a accessory this time, accessory, then now, we're also going to have to make a check for where we're moving it here. So this for loop, instead of setting a parameter for each accessory, it's just going to reparent it so it'll move it to somewhere else. So if we're moving it to the player, so if str equals player, then we're going to set um, the accessory or item in this case, its parent to be inside of player.character, and that'll automatically place it back onto the character. Else if string equals folder, then item.parent equals folder. So that should all work. So inside of here, when we're setting toggle to be true and setting to be invisible, that means we're moving everything to the folder. So we're gonna say move accessories folder. And then if we're setting it to be visible, we're moving it back to the player. So move accessories player. Okay, that should all work. So you can see our um, our stuff disappears. If we go into here, we can see that there's a folder ex called accessories that we created. And if we make ourselves invisible, it moves all of our stuff into the folder. And then if not, it moves it out of the folder and places it back onto our character. But our face still remains... Uh, where'd my face go? Oh, I'm back here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, the face is still there. Um, and that's just a simple fix. Of course, we don't have to do any enumerations. Um, we're just going to make one more function that just moves the face. So move face 
um, and we're also going to have this be str, and that's just going to be reparenting the face. So if str equals player, then we're moving the the mo moving the face to the player. So that means it's in the folder. So folder dot face. The decal for face is called face in lowercase, by the way. Um, dot parent equals player dot character dot head. So um. If we place the decal inside of head, it'll automatically replace the head in the proper spot. Else if str equals, uh, not character, what am I talking about, folder, then then we know that it's in the player, so um, player.character.head.face.parent equals folder. Okay, we have all that. So now we're just going to do um, a similar thing we did with the move accessories. We're gonna say folder for this one. And we're going to say player for this one. So let's go into here and see if that works. And yay, it works. So if we go up here, we can see our face is inside of the accessories folder. And now it's back on our face. And then if we check our character, we can see the accessories disappear in the head. There's no face, but if we go back, there's a face inside the head, our accessories are back. So that is how you make an invisibility tool. Thank you for watching.